Hello and welcome to Trading 5 Talents. In this video, I want to uh, do a walkthrough of the latest version of the trade log that I have for free. It's made in Google Sheets. Um, the link is down in the description, so if you just want to go ahead and click on that, and then there are directions here on the first tab. Just um, click on File, then click on Make a Copy, and then you'll be able to save that uh, file for you to edit as you need, and it'll be saved in your Google Drive. So if you want to do that, uh, please go ahead. Um, but the main thing that uh, is updated in this version 3.9 is simply the dates for 2023. Um, one of the requests I did get, however, was to do a walkthrough of the trade log because I haven't done one in a while. So I thought that was an excellent idea and suggestion. So I'm going to do that here. Another request was to go through, um, for example, the wheel strategy uh, using the trade log and how that works out and, and how to, uh, I guess, interpret maybe the numbers and what the trade log is actually doing and calculating. So we'll do that in our walkthrough. All right, so the dashboard, um, obviously I just mentioned, uh, let's go all the way to the instructions. If for whatever reason you need to know how to use a trade log, then um, just go here. Um, everything should be laid out pretty easily. The change log just keep, helps me keep track of what has been updated, and you can see um, today the updates for 2023. We'll get into these two, the trade log and the cost basis uh, for this video. So let's start with the trade log. So you click on here. And um, you can see there, I, I've already put a lot of trades in here. And the way that this works is that each row or each you know horizontal line is a single trade, open and close. So if you open a trade, it goes on this line. If you close that same trade, it still goes on that same line. So we have our open information over here on the left, some of your strike stuff over here shaded in gray, and then your close stuff goes over here on the right, and then all these other things get calculated. So let's start with um, the wheel strategy. So what we want to do is we're going to do a cover or a cash secured put. So this is going to be a short put, and these are all the trade types you can add in, uh, you can select from. So a short put, we're just going to use the symbol ABC. Let's say we open it on the third of January of next year for a strike price of or at the strike price of fifteen dollars. So we come over here to the expiration. You can double click on this and um, go to January. So let's say we open it on the third because the market's closed on the second and it expires on the sixth. And we just did one of these and we opened it because it's a cash secured put. We are selling it and we're receiving a credit or receiving the premium. And let's say we sell it for 25 cents right there. Okay, perfect. So now let's say, um, January 6th comes around, it expires out of the money, and so we can let it expire January 6th, and since it expired worthless, it's zero. And so you can see the total profit is $25. Um, our collateral that was used, and you got these other you know, metrics that are, are calculated here. All right, let's do it again. Uh, we're gonna sell another cash secured put on ABC. So it expired on the 6th, so we're gonna open it up on the 9th. Um, the expiration would be the that Friday, which would be the 13th, we sold one of them. And let's say that it expired there in the money. We still get to keep our full premium, so $0. We sold it for, let's say, another 25 cents. Um, and you can see $25 is our profit. But because it expired in the money, we were assigned that stock. Okay, so now we have to create a new line, and this is going to be stock ABC. Because we have now purchased this stock, it's referred to as a long uh, stock position. So long stock ABC, and we purchased this on the day that our put expired in the money. So that would be the 13th. What did we purchase it for? Well, our strike price was $15. So we come over here. You'll see that it updates and there's no expiration or option. The share quantity, since we sold one contract, was 100 shares. The buy price, because the strike at 15 expired in the money, we had to purchase those shares at $15 per share. And this is an open position. Um, we haven't closed it yet because we were just assigned the shares. And you can see that is those two things are left blank. All right, now that we own the stock, we own 100 shares of ABC at $15, we can come over here to our cost basis tab, and you can see this auto populates as well. Our original cost basis of ABC at 100 shares is $15. Over here in the light gray, we have an adjusted cost basis. And what our adjusted cost basis shows is the cost basis of our shares minus 
any premium we received in relationship to those shares. So what premium did we receive? Well, back on our trade log, we received this $50 from these two cash secured puts. So if you want to uh, figure out what your new cost basis is, that's what this light gray area shows. So those $50, that $50 lowers our cost basis of ABC. And so, you know, per share, that would be a $14.50 per share cost basis. Now, if we, if we took away the puts, okay, we, let's say we don't want it to adjust our cost basis. You can just unclick this up here and it's going to update down here to $15. Yeah, so $15 right there. So these boxes right here, you can use at your discretion if you want to um, lower your cost basis or adjust your cost basis based on any type of trade that you make in relationship to that stock that you own. Um, I put this up here because people want to track their stuff differently. I personally don't use adjusted cost basis, um, but that's just my preference. But you have this up here for your use. Okay, let's go back to the trade log. Okay, so now we own our stock ABC. So let's sell a covered call on it. We just purchased the shares or we're just assigned the shares on the 13th. So the next time we can sell a covered call would be on the 16th. Let's say we want to sell it back at our cost basis of $15. Um, we'll push enter. Um, the expiration, we sold it on the 16th, and so it's going to expire on the 20th. We're going to sell one of them because we only own 100 shares. It expired, let's say it expired there on the 20th as well and expired out of the money. So our sell price, our buy price would be zero. Let's say we, let's again say we sold it for 25 cents. All right, so we should get $25 here. Once this updates, get $25 there. So now, if we check calls on our cost basis, we should be down um, or we should be lowering our cost basis by uh, 75 cents. So if we check our cost basis tab, yep, $14.25. Okay, so again, you can uncheck the short call if you want to, and then it would go back up to $14.50. Um, okay, so let's do another covered call and complete the wheel. Okay, so short call, again, ABC, and now we're going to sell it um, when did we sell this last one? 16th, 20. Okay, so we're going to sell it on the 23rd. And let's say, we're again, we're going to go for $15 and just get, uh, hopefully get out right where we purchased them at. And let's say this one expired in the money. Okay, so first of all, the 23rd, and then it expires the 27th. And let's say we sold this one also for 25 cents, just for round numbers. We sold one of them. And let's say it does expire on the 27th and it expires in the money. So that means we still keep the full premium right there. So we get $25 for this. So now our cost basis should be down to 14 um, because we're applying all of the premium to lower our cost basis. Now, because this covered call expired in the money, that means our shares are called away. So we have to complete this share or this stock trade line. So the close date would be whenever this closed as well. That's when our shares are called away on the 27th. Now, what did we sell our shares at? Well, we sold them at the strike price that we sold this cover call at, covered call at, which was $15. So we click on 15. And for the shares themselves, we're going to make $0 because we had to buy them at $15 and then we sold them for $15. So we shouldn't have a profit or a loss uh, for those shares. And that's what you see here. No profit, no loss. All right, so that's how you complete the wheel um, using the trade log. Now, because we no longer have the shares of ABC, our cost basis should not show any open positions. So when we click on that, you can see there are no more open positions for ABC. All right, so that's what that's the idea of the cost basis is just to show what you have open and then what premiums you've applied to that particular stock holding position and, and what the average um, share price is. All right, so with the trade log, there are other things that you can do here. I, something I just wanted to show you is that um, depending on what type of you know, trade type you're clicking on, it's going to automatically show which fields need to be um, filled in. So for example, um, stocks, you don't, you don't have a strike price for it. You're going to have the share quantity and the buy price. For calls, like single calls, single puts, um, you have to enter a strike price. For vertical spreads, you're going to have to enter the short and the long strikes. For condors and butterflies, you're going to have to enter all of the strike prices um, that you're using here. Anything having to do with um, options, you're going to have an expiration field to fill out, the option quantity, or basically how many iron condors you've sold. You don't need to enter four 
for an iron condor, you just need to enter one because it's only one position. Um, the buy price, that's again, what you purchased it for, uh, your close date, your sell price, what you sold it for. Now it does get a little bit confusing. Anything that is a short position, like a short put, short call, short iron condor, short butterfly, uh, or iron fly, that's, this is your open price because you're receiving a credit. You're selling to open. That's what you put right here in the sell price. That's why I didn't say open price and close price because it depends on what type of trade you're doing. So that's why I have a sell price and a buy price. Any fees that you might uh, incur or any other type of um, dollar amount that you need to add in here, whether it's an adjustment, maybe it's a dividend. Um, you know, so if you get a dividend from a stock, you can enter that here in this line, and then that all calculates to the total profit. Original cost basis is going to go back to um, an error because you no longer own ABC. Therefore, there's no cost basis to um, consider here. Adjusted cost basis is what we saw on the trade log. I'm sorry, on the cost basis tab. Um, your collateral that you're using, the adjusted collateral based on your new adjusted cost basis, the max profit for that particular trade, the max loss for that trade, and then you've got all of these other metrics here. So I have some columns that are hidden, and um, those uh, some of them are just used for calculations. Um, so I just hit them so that they don't make it too um, cumbersome. And then you have a note section for anything else that you want to um, keep track of. Because this is a trade log, it's, it is helpful to have notes in there. All of these formulas are in row seven, and that's hidden um, just in case uh, someone accidentally deletes it, then it would it would disrupt the whole trade log. So I did hide those, um, but if you wanted to see them, you can unhide uh, row seven. Now up here in the top left, it's going to give you the total for whatever. Uh, well, in blue, it's going to give you the total for the entire year. Um, in green, it's going to give you the total for whatever you select through these slicers or these filters. For example, um, you can just look at all of your long um, trades or your, all of your short trades. Uh, for the type, this is all. Uh, this includes all of the trade types that we have. Your symbol, obviously, we're only trading ABC in this example, but it would have all of your symbols if you just wanted to see your profits and losses based on a particular symbol. And then, of course, the month. And so as you go throughout the year, then you're going to have a lot more months filled out. But because only January has been filled out so far, only January shows up. So once you get all of your data into your trade log, it's going to transfer over to the dashboard. And so you can see we made $100 in the month of January and it shows up here. You can also um, enter what you want to gain each month and there, there will be a blue line that shows you um, where that target is. And then in green, it's gonna show you what your profit is. Um, and then you'll have an average um, monthly gain plotted as well. So adjustments, so first of all, um, you put in what you start each month. So let's say you're starting with $2,000 in January, you'd put that in. It's going to um, auto-calculate uh, based on these numbers though. So just whatever you start the month with here. So if, if you lose, it's automatically gonna show up here. If you win, it's gonna show up here. Um, your target will show up once the date is correct. So the date is not yet um, January 1st, 2023. That's why it's blank. It'll show you the number of trades that month, your average ROI for the month. If you have any adjustments like, um, Let's say you got, I don't know, an interest payment. You can add that in here. Um, any deposits that you've added or adjustments can also be withdrawals that you made. So you add that in here. Now, once the calendar turns over to the next month, um, February 1st of 2023, then this field is going to auto-populate with all of these numbers. So now you have your new starting balance for the month of February, and then you add your trades in for February and so on. So that's what uh, the trade log is. Um, again, the link is down in the description. It is free. Um, however, if you enjoy this trade log um, and you like to show any type of appreciation, um, I do have a Patreon link down here. And it'll bring you to uh, my Patreon page. Um, if you want to support at a dollar a month, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, you don't have to, um, but if you wanted to, then that would be a great way of saying thank you. Um, and I do appreciate it. And I appreciate you watching this video and uh, supporting the channel. And using the trade log, I enjoy all the feedback that you all provide, and um, I'll continue to try to make this trade log uh, better as time goes on. And I'm also going to post a video later on how to transfer your trades from your previous year into the current year trade log. So if you have any questions about the trade log or any suggestions that uh, I'll hopefully be able to implement, then go ahead and leave those down in the comment section down below, and I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. Until next time, trade wisely, take care, and have a happy new year.